2017 meeting of the Scarborough Town of Scarborough Ordinance Committee. Uh, present are Councilor St. Clair and Foley, uh, and myself, uh, Councilor Donovan. Uh, not present yet, but expected is Councilor Rowan. Uh, town manager is also uh, here. And uh, approval of the minutes of September 20, 2016. Uh, so moved. Uh, I think we probably have no one who's on uh, who was in attendance at that meeting, which makes it difficult. I did. I was. Oh, you were? Yes. Good. All Both um, Will and I were. Oh, good. Uh, so, Will, if you could second my minutes, if you don't have any issues with them, that'd be mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, no, minutes for accurate. Thank you. Yes, good. Uh, all in favor? Uh, two to nothing. Two. Uh, one abstention. So, uh, discussion. Confirm meeting schedule for the first Thursday of each month at 4 p.m. Is that satisfactory with everyone? Great. Okay, we'll stay with that. 405. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. 407. Uh, uh, today we're going to spend uh, uh, all of our time uh, reviewing possible items uh, to that the Ordinance Committee is going to address. Uh, and try to prioritize those that we think need immediate attention. Uh, we will always try to have our agendas reflect both matters of highest urgency, but also matters that may be routine, but will fill in so that we can make as much progress at every meeting. Uh, the first item, and I'm going to ask uh, the town manager to uh, sort of introduce each item and then I'll comment if I have any additional things and then we'll put it out. We're going to finish today at 520. We've got some obligations mm -hmm. uh, uh, and we want to leave some time at the end of the meeting for anything that might not be on this list that people think is uh, valuable or appropriate to bring to the Ordinance Committee's attention for consideration uh, for uh, review and prioritization. So let's start with the uh, recreational marijuana. Tom? Just a procedural matter. Forgive me, I failed to include public comment as a standing agenda item, mm -hmm. and I certainly will do that. Oh, I good. Just defer that's to you as to when you'd like to take that. We and that's okay. great. And in fact, uh, Susan, uh, I know we suggested that you come and make some, uh, give us some input. And if you wished, if you didn't want to stay for the entire meeting, I'd be happy to have those two matters considered first, because you raised both the horse issue uh, uh, and the uh, Pine Point Road parking issue. So if you okay. want to give us your insight into those, be So is this the normal rules of the Susan Hamill, A Street, and Pine Point? Yes. Um, the, the item that I wa was hoping uh, that would be taken up sometime over the next year, and not necessarily right away, is the horse beach permit. Um, just that we made changes back in 2009 to require a visible per a visible license uh, in the hopes that the horse owners, the riders, would, you know, feel compelled to clean up after and their And you horse. should realize I circulated your letter again so that everyone had it, including the 2009 kind right. of background. So. Yeah. And anyway, it really uh, doesn't seem to have really had any effect. And um, I actually sent everybody on the committee um, an update this afternoon, which you probably haven't seen, but it included uh, links to the two articles, and I noticed in there that Dave Corbeau, the old mm -hmm. Marine Re Resource Officer, had um, had some testing done um, for the fecal counts of, in the water and, and was sure that there was a tie between the horse manure on the beach um, and increases in those, in those counts. So it does it does affect clamors, um, and particularly on the front beaches where we we hen clam, and we have lots of people who only hen clam in the winter because they are concerned about um, you know swimmers and don't want that pollution. So um, I I did uh, looking at what we did in 2009 as we started in the spring, and it once the horse owners find out that you're thinking about making changes other than just the cost then um, they are going to show up and be, con you know, voice as they should, mm -hmm. um, their concerns. So uh, I'm hoping that we, you can start to address this at some point in the, next, in the coming months. 
but I've talked to um, Old Orchard, and um, uh, they they actually had their horse permit before 2009 required their, that the riders use a, like a horse diaper or, mm -hmm. or a fun bag. And so when when Old Orchard decided to go with Scarborough and do the joint permit, that that was dropped. So it is something that um, other towns have done, and uh, and it does work. Yeah. So no one wants to see the horses banned from the beach. That's for sure. So. Yeah, please stay right there, and, and we might just have some questions since you are a good source of information. Yes. Um, Susan, do you know where the worst area is? Well. So I live at Bay Street, and I yeah. tend to when I when I'm on the beach, I tend to go toward Old Orchard. Yeah. But you'd have to assume if horses behave anything like dogs, that you get there. So a lot of it's going to be in the parking lot, and that yeah. that gets cleaned up. I've seen that actually. That gets cleaned up typically. Mm -hmm. But then um, it is you do see it all along the beach, all along the intertidal zone, all the way right to <coughs> Old Orchard, and really? you know. Horses, um, I did a little research, and it's, it's not uh, unusual to have a 1,000 pounds of yeah. manure a day. So, um, as, you know, and it's, it really is difficult to pick it up. Uh, you almost need, they, they do make, uh, like, a mechanism to get down yeah. from the, your horse. But for a lot of people who are elderly or, they're, you know, they enjoy doing this. And, I don't, you know, it's really perplexing what the answer is because um, it is perfect. do you oh I'm sorry no, no, I'm follow up. Up. go ahead um, do you know why and I wasn't here in 2009 when they joined with Old Orchard but do you know why the why um, bun bags are not used anymore I really I, I don't I don't I know. mean I come from riding like I was a rider I showed in 4-H and you know all that stuff so we use those all the time that's nothing foreign to me, so I'm not. They're very easy. I assume that it's it's um, you know the the Scarborough riders never had to use them, and and historically Old Orchard didn't sell that many permits. They would sell five, and Scarborough would sell 175. Well, I know when I was in Old Orchard, um, we didn't sell as many because obviously that beach is much more crowded um, and smaller in the in the main areas where people had enough room to be able to drop off their horse. Um, so the access is a lot smaller than Scarborough's access. So well, I think that's probably why they don't get anywhere near as many as we do. Plus, um, Old Orchard had, it was $10 and you, you got like three, t three days. It was good for three days. So it wasn't a seasonal permit the way Scarborough's has always been a seasonal permit. Interesting. So if you had a horse in this area and you could choose, you yeah. would. What's the, uh, what's the season? It's uh, October 1st to March 31st. Yeah. And, and the permit cost is? It's $20 now. It was doubled in 2009. Yeah. From $10 to would, 20 Do you think that uh, uh, increased cost would not, uh, would have any effect on behavior? I think um, if you own a horse, you know, it's pretty expensive. Yeah, you've, yeah. it's already. Yeah. Like, You're and already so if you have a horse, it's also... Um, and you have four kids, say, that all ride it at, at different times. You've got to get a permit for each of your kids. It's, it's the, the rider that needs the permit, not the, actu not the right. horse. Right. So, um, I don't know, you do have a lot of groups that do therapy with horses these days. And, um, and then we have, so we have a sentence in the, in the ordinance that says that if you're handicapped and not able to dismount or get clean up after your horse, you, then you're exempt from the rules. So see, my son did horse therapy, and they always had um, somebody with you. Right. So that person Which always cleaned up after yeah. the horse. Mm. Yeah. So I guess it would be an older person that would be well, I, I doing therapy. Well, I did in my okay. email that I sent, um, I, I had a couple of um, options. One is to change the wording. This is really easy to just say immediately clean up mm -hmm. your horse waste, because I've had people tell me that Oh, they're, they'll clean it up. They, they obey the rules. Yeah. But by the time they get back, the horse, the manure is washed away. Yeah. So that's just, and, and other beaches I've read the same, similar, you know. I've gone on some of the forums of the horse owners and looked at all, this, all the comments. 
So then you've got the bun bags. Mm. And then um, change the penalty. This is what Ian, uh, the Marine Patrol guy, suggested. Change the penalty to ban the rider on the second offense. So currently, it's just fi it's fifty dollars for the first, a hundred for the second, and two fifty for the third. But absolutely ban them on the second offense. Um, they might take that a little more seriously. However, you still have this bigger problem of the enforcement. There is yeah, no one yeah. on the beach in front of Beach Walk or you know Bay Street or there's no nobody. And it's, it's up to somebody like myself to take a photo of the rider and send it to the to some to the police or whatever. And, and it's just um, the enforcement's the problem. Well, so, um, do you have an idea for for um, uh, how many people are actually have permits? I mean, I, I think you may mention so that some some weren't right as now, quickly as they're um, supposed to be. Right now, they they've sold 95 permits, and then um, typically it's about 200. So by but most of the riding occurs in the spring. Yeah. In but you know. Do you, have an, do you do you have any feeling or observations about whether the people actually have a permit or or they're in compliance with it purchasing the permit in order to oh, do yeah. it? Oh yeah, everybody. Everybody does. Everybody it. does, unless yeah. it were in last year's bib. You know. It's, that that aspect of it has really worked well. It's, it's really people are used well. to wearing them, right. and you wouldn't go down there without one. Yeah, and then as far as the bun bags themselves, I mean that that's fairly inexpensive. Well, and they're not so a they're about problem. I think seventy five dollars. Yeah, and, and they're reusable. Yeah, you know, like and and no, I'm not sorry to interrupt you, but um, at least when I was doing it, um, I I didn't know anyone that had a horse that did not own one. Right. Because you never know where you're going to take your horse, and if you don't have a lot of trails where you board or where you live, then you're always trailering that horse to somewhere else, and you don't know what the laws are where you take them. And so everybody that I grew up with had bun bags. I mean, it was just like right. it was like part of our tack. Right. I mean, it's part of the tack box. So yep. So to me, it seems like a simple solution. Why are we not? Why is it not in our ordinance yeah. that you are that you have to use a bun bag? Seems like a simple solution. So I, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to question. This might be more appropriate for Tom, but do we have an idea for how many um, uh, enforcement actions that we've actually taken? How many times someone's actually been caught with? Not many. Ever? Yeah. Not many. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah, I'm, I'm afraid uh, I wasn't prepared to get into yeah. the substance of this. Yeah, right. uh, yeah. Anything on Pine Point Road parking that you wanted to mention, or you want to let that one? No, I'm. I'm. You know, I'll be paying attention. Yeah. That's when the time comes, but I just, I wanted just to be sure that this would get on yeah. your list. Yeah, good. But that was good input because I think you educated uh, the ordinance committee and several new members, so. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you. Recreational marijuana. Uh, Tom? Yes, uh, the strategy has been to date, um, was kind of let this play out a little bit. Uh, many communities have taken some initial action, the most appropriate, I shouldn't say that, the most common approach I've seen municipally is to impose a moratorium so they have time to study and put in place the proper regulations. Some communities have actually gone forward and, and, and done that already. Um, as I understand it, the governor actually has uh, signed this into law now. He did. And so it, uh, it, is, it will be lawful sh very shortly uh, for the use and possession of a certain amount and I don't profess to understand and know all the particulars of the law. Uh, but uh, there are a number of things that are still wide open waiting for the state uh, to promulgate rules and, and regulations around um, a number of very important aspects of this. And I believe the law provides uh, up to nine months for the state to sort this out. Uh, they may well take, they should take the time they need. My prediction is they might take a bit longer than that. So there still is an urgency. Um, I guess the only thing that we've seen, and this started as soon as the petitions were circulated, uh, there were some folks speculating, looking to lock up retail space mm -hmm. for potential shops, uh, retail operations, and to date we've been successful in rebuffing those inquiries by saying it's not lawful, let's wait till the law, till the law is approved. Uh, we're now in a bit of a different territory. The law is is approved. Um, so, so let's let's focus on the first step that most every community that's sort of entertained this, which is uh, pass a, a, an order uh, issuing a moratorium. Six months is what the law allows us to do. It allows us for one extension so that we can actually go out 12 months. Uh, and just as a part of 
commentary on this. I am a true believer that we should trail, not lead, when it comes to getting out there with regulations, because I think that there's a huge lack of knowledge mm -hmm. as to, uh, one, state regulations, two, uh, <coughs> uh, traffic enforcement, three, adverse effect on kids. Uh, uh, just There's so much that I worry about this causing harm to our the public that I would love to be able to, we're not going to, uh, it's passed. It's legal and people are going to be smoking mm -hmm. uh, or, or consuming it in their homes and growing plants and that's all, that's fine, that's lawful. But I think from a long-term point of view, uh, I think letting others make their mistakes and stub their toes might be a good way to go. All of that obviously, uh, start, some people are talking about just ban dry town. But others are just starting with this concept of a moratorium. And so uh, uh, certainly to allow the state to get out front of the regulatory aspects and not force us into uh, 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 dealing with permit requests. So I'd like to hear everyone's thoughts on, Kate, we'll start with you and we'll go right down the line. Yeah, I mean, I have, you know, uh, I, we've, talked, we've been talking about this now for probably two years. Um, well, at least over a year. Well, it was the medical marijuana. Yeah, the medical marijuana. So we do have some information in regards to that. I think that the law itself, you know, there are some parts of it that I certainly have issue with, but I think it's, I think they're, they've set some, some pretty strict guidelines with it. Um, I mean, I pretty much have know it inside and out at this point because I've really been reading about it and looking into it. I could probably sit here and recite the whole law to you at this yeah. point. Um, well, I agree with the, the six-month moratorium, and I would support that. Um, I would say that while we do that, I would like to still be, I don't want to see us get caught with our pants down, so to speak. I know that's probably not the best acronym to use, but that's the only thing that came to mind. <laughs> um, I don't want to be behind the, behind the ball when this comes to a head. And I'd like to make sure that we're all still um, looking into it, continuing to think about it, figuring out what our positions are going to be, and what we would like to see happen. Um, because exactly. I think when it comes to We ought to, to have it, a strategy that goes beyond a six-month moratorium. Correct. Um, because I do think, while not everyone agrees with marijuana or the use of marijuana, it is a state law now. It has been passed, and we are going to have to deal with it and it will come to this town at some point. Yeah. And I think, and I, I don't want this to sound um, bad, but there are some benefits to Scarborough when it does come to this town. Um, and, you know, everybody says it was like the gambling. You know, I don't want that in my backyard. I don't want that in my backyard. But you know what? We have to have some things in our backyard. Yeah, right. You know, we can't keep everything out of Scarborough and expect to still maintain the services that we maintain. And I feel like this is another one of those issues where people sometimes take this higher ground, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that. But on the flip side of that, we still need to be thinking about it and planning for it because it's coming. Uh, and, and if there was a, uh, a downside to the community by potentially being restrictive, more restrictive than less restrictive, I would want us to debate that issue Correct. when we get there. I agree. We'll, we'll, uh, yeah, I, I guess I would say that we, we would have a choice. I mean, there are towns, I believe, that are, are trying to ban it outright. Um, so I think that that's a, um, an avenue that could be pursued, but I think it should be a very thoughtful and deliberative. That's well, just, just a scary clear, thought, though. It's my understanding, the only thing that we can do locally, not the only thing, but the areas that we have regulatory control of locally, because possession and use is lawful statewide. That's right. Right. To be clear. And state this trust local. This with cultivation, uh, certainly of a commercial scale. Cultivation and retail sales. Retail sales, sales and social Correct. clubs. And social clubs. Correct. Uh, the, yep. those, the, the law very clearly allows local regulatory authority. So those three are the ones for we're really talking about. Aspects. Gotcha. And we cannot... So, State always trumps local. Yeah, so possession and use would be then right. legal as soon as the governor signs it. Right. He signed it. Okay, signed it. so he has signed it. Um, is there, is, do we have any legs in terms of waiting for the regulations to come from the legislature? 
We do. The peril we oh, yeah. run, and because we don't have any regulations, let's talk about medical marijuana, for instance. We don't discern that um, as a a use in our uh, land use, and so uh, believe it or not, we're at 12 or 13 commercial grow operations now in this town for medical marijuana under those regulations. And they are permitted under commercial agriculture because we don't have any uh, th any separate use category. Mm -hmm. right. um, I would note that we've been doing this for three or four years and there's really not no an issue. issue. We've, we haven't had an issue. Uh, oh, I industrial grow legs. And so uh, to the PD transitioning okay. to now recreational marijuana with particularly the resale, retail sales aspect of it, that's not been an issue for medical marijuana, but uh, it's likely to be a very big issue. And again, failing any specific use called, I don't know what we call it, marijuana retail, uh, it falls under general retail, which is fairly ubiquitous in town. You can, mm -hmm. you can have retail operations in a lot of places that we may not want this kind of retail operation, mm -hmm. close to schools and other potential uses. So th that's the danger we run um, between now and then. So, th so there, without, in the absence of a moratorium, because this has been signed, we couldn't have any other way to stop a retail op operation from opening in town with, unless we had a moratorium. It's getting increasingly well, difficult. It, yeah, would, be, it would be difficult I mean, because we'd have to come up with yeah. a theory for why it isn't just a general I, retail but sale. I, I would think that the, 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 the theory or the grounds would be that those regulations haven't been written. Yeah, I suspect we can, that would be our standard response, that the state has not yet promulgated rules and regs around that operation, and until they do so, yeah, we're not issuing permits. Right. That will only last for so long. Well, it only lasts for so long. And, but, to my, but to Bill's point about not being uh, leading Correct. this and, and, and uh, being out ahead, the longer that we could wait for the moratorium, if we only have a 12-month period, and this, this is a fairly complex issue that we may want to take our time with, um, uh, the longer that we could wait before we do that initial moratorium, the, the better. So if there, if there was a way to not permit the retail or the cultivation or the social club. Cultivation is likely to yeah. cultivation be more challenging. Yep. Um, but I think retail and social clubs, will we can continue to maintain that position. And if we get pressed on it, uh, then we can come back. A moratorium can be done fairly quickly by council. So we'll talk about the moratorium yeah. and, and process and time in a second. But Katie, uh, your initial thoughts on this? Um, I would support a moratorium for sure. I do think it's important not to let it go. I like your idea around, um, you know, learning from others. You know, learning from others. <laughs> make a few mistakes. There's going to be mistakes with something new like this. But I do think it's really important to have kind of that long-term vision. So in 10 years, what does this look like in our town where does it fit best? Um, you know, I see. I understood it a little differently in that I didn't think we could um, not issue permits if we didn't have a moratorium. But I, that came from an article, and I can't tell you that it was very factual. So that's what's my understanding. Yeah, if I mean, we can, if we can, if we can still say it's definitely a gray area. Yeah. Yes. Because because I thought they could then because it could be take the, you to court the general and say sale of that you're. Sure. Discriminating yes. not, and you're exactly you're, so. Right, they could. I mean, we can yeah. continue to do it. They've, we've rebuffed all advances so far. We can continue with the same party line. If someone turns then, up the heat, then then, then, then we could yeah. take some evasive yeah. action. So I would be fine with either approach. Uh, so but if, if we, if so let, let's let's talk then about uh, the moratorium. Will's making the point that. Uh, the more we drag our feet, there's a little advantage because it extends out this 12-month period. 16 or 18 months. Tom, well. Tom, you're right. pointing out that doing a moratorium as is it a ordinance or is it an order? I, I beg order. your pardon. I don't know. I believe it's an ordinance, mm -hmm. but so it could be done in two successive meetings. So you could do uh, it fairly quickly. Okay. Uh, what we certainly can do is, and the good thing about first and second reading, Yeah, you can schedule your second reading when you want. Yeah. Um, but it would seem as if we could start with a first, first reading. reading. Mm -hmm. I and just, I, I understand your point, um, and I understand your point and your point. Um, I just, I think a moratorium for six months is, is plenty of time. I think there are other towns that are actually going to jump on this 
because of the income potential that could, could possibly come out of it. Um, so I think within six months, we're going to already see things happening. Um, I think we start to get into a very, um, a really touchy issue when we start telling people no, and it's going on all around us, and it is a state law. Right. Um, but I think my concern was more around the fact that it could be nine months or longer before the state regulations come out, and if we start our clock earlier, we're going to have that much less time to respond to whatever those regulations are. I okay. My and my your, point, your point is just that we take the six months. There may be something lost. Correct. By uh, by not acting Correct. to put in place a regulatory framework for Correct. selling it and growing it. Well, what is lost, if I might ask? Um, uh, well, uh, potentially, like, it's, it's almost like with, uh, with buildings, in my opinion. I mean... The commercial element, the I think, is really what Kate's yeah. talking about. I mean... And, and that's why I think getting you to speak with uh, SEDCO, uh, Karen Martin, about what is economic development uh, organizations got advising towns on what they should do how are they looking at this? Yeah, okay. the inquiries to date have been for existing space, lease, lease space, not build new, new construction. And my hunch is that's likely to be the scenario going forward. I'll be surprised unless it's a large-scale commercial grow operation. Yeah, that'd be. Um, well, and I don't know. How don't expect much economic development yeah. per se mm -hmm. to come out of this. But I think more along the lines of, you know, I mean, it's like with the building people. They're only going to wait so long before they're going to go somewhere else. Right. And maybe that's fine with certain people on the council. Maybe that's fine with certain people in town. But I'm getting to a point where I start to get frustrated when I'm constantly hearing from people, well, we want this and we want that, but we don't want any, our town to change at all. We don't want to let anybody else in our town. We don't want to do this. We don't want to do that. But we want to keep our schools great. We want to have great road crews. We want to have this. Yeah. Well, guess what? If we want to have all those things, we have to make changes in this town, and we have to allow things into this town. I guess I'm just not seeing the, 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 the financial benefit to the town that helps pay for the schools of, of you know, having six months of a retail operation in, a, in an already existing commercial location. And I, I'm going to suggest that that is a oh, debate geez. that we probably are going to have to have is, is there a commercial opportunity here that would cause the economic development arm of our community to say, don't miss out on this. My guess is that answer is no, that it's got, because of the illegality associated with this until a few days ago, that, that uh, it, it's not going to be embraced as an economic opportunity. But we'll find out about that. In the meantime, I think we're all in agreement that uh, doing a first reading would get us in a position where we could then enact through second reading at our own timetable. Right. So we will, because we, we get the public hearing, which could sit in between mm -hmm. uh, uh, a separate meeting. Uh, but at least if we, I think the town, the town did not favor this, voted, it, uh, voted against it. Uh, and I, I'll tell, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I will tell you that when we talked about recre um, medical marijuana, we did have two growers in here, or no, one, one, two growers in here, and we heard from a third. Um, and it was really educational to get some of their feedback. And, you know, I guess, quite frankly, you know, I know, I mean, it's not a surprise. I'm an emotional person. I come from an emotional place at times. But, you know, I have seen... Um, you know, marijuana stop a child from seizing 60 times a day to zero. So for me, I, I do see some the of the, the positives behind this. And I understand there's a lot of people that don't, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But I think we're on, this is, we're on a train that we're, not, we're only going to be able to stop for so long. And I just don't want to be unprepared for when it hits us. Yeah. I don't want a lawsuit with this town. I want us to have something in place before someone comes at us saying, mm -hmm. you can't stop us from doing that a state law and we're like going well we don't want you here well that's not acceptable so I just want to make sure we're prepared there, there, is my point and there is a lot of learning there uh, is a lot the, some of the stuff that's come out recently has talked about um, 60 minutes had a piece 
and, and uh, Northern California, 95% of their crop, which is only a medical marijuana state. Right. Uh, presently, it just passed recreational, but historically, uh, they said 95% goes into the black market. That's right. And that means that the people who are running that operation are the underworld. The, the, this is organized crime. Mm -hmm. And so we have to make sure that we have, like the medical marijuana people are running it now, I probably would give a thumbs up mm -hmm. that those 11, 12, 13 operators are probably good. But, and they're great people. And I, mean, I, I am worried that we will cause influences to be introduced into the community. You're right, the ball is rolling down the hill. That's, so that's the scary there's, part. There's, we'll have to act. So yeah. everyone I think that's where the vision piece comes in. Like, do we want to have 20 growers in town? Do we want to have 50 growers in town? Do we want a retail shop next to the Beals ice cream store? Or do we want it mm -hmm. somewhere, you know, yeah. in a different area? And those are the things that I think we have to, I mean, I'm in no way, shape, or form thinking we're stopping the train or necessarily making this. So, Tom, what I'm thinking is that while this is a high sensitivity ordinance, that it may be three or four months before we kind of jump into it? I, I would tend to agree that the longer you can hold off without any unintended consequences, the better. Keep your powder dry. Can um, you can the, in just a uh, frame of reference, the sort of regulations that the state imposed for medical marijuana um, I might suggest are more stringent than we would have considered otherwise, and that's largely why they work so well. And they're very quietly doing their thing. There's, they're they're very highly regulated from the state. So I um, would be interested in knowing what the state will do in this regard. I hope they follow suit. Um, mm -hmm. So knowing that would be quite instructive, I think. And I understand that to put in place a moratorium, you need to have a a valid public purpose. Uh, and to extend yeah. it, you have to have a continuation of that valid public purpose. So, That's true. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I would say we're in probably on solid footing because of the nine months the state's going to take at a minimum, everyone says it's going to be more like 12. But yeah. if you're talking with council, you may want to uh, uh, make that inquiry. So, okay, let's. Let's start I, with I, I like the idea of doing the first reading so that we're ready to go if, if need be, but I'm, I'm very concerned about moving ahead of the state. Yes. Um, personally. Yeah, try and defer until. As soon, and I as, think as, soon as the next meeting or uh, February, we can advance that first reading? Yeah, February would be good. So I think the moratorium needs to articulate the public purpose, and I, th I think mm -hmm. we can quite easily put that together in this right. case. Okay. So just so I understand, so what we're discussing is having another ordinance where we meeting where we then advance to the next town council meeting. So it would be the end of February before we did that first reading. Is that what I'm hearing? I was thinking that we do it at the first, uh, February 1st meeting. At the February 1st town council meeting, yeah. have that first reading of the, yeah. of the ordinance. Okay. Right. That works for me. And <clears throat> I think we're all going to, um, uh, certainly the town manager will be attuned to what's going on. We all will be attuned to... Uh, and we'll advance to the second uh, public hearing and the second reading on a schedule that's going to be decided. Probably we'll look at it at the fe our February meeting. Yeah. Uh, and see where we are. We'll look at it at each meeting. Yep. All right, next item, consumer fireworks. Tom? Well, this is a matter that uh, actually we had a council workshop on. Um, I don't recall there being any kind of clear consensus position by the council. There was some conversation at that workshop uh, in the fall. Uh, and this really fell out of uh, kind of a flurry of complaints, uh, predictably, that comes uh, came to the town shortly after July 4th. Uh, that's, that's when we typically see the complaints. Uh, we did some survey work that was really ineffectual, uh, other than indicating that people are interested in the topic. I think that's probably the only takeaway that I would feel comfortable with. Um, and now, of course, we've had the uh, New Year's Day holiday uh, come and go. Uh, I think it was Councillor Hayes last night that reported uh, on his experience. Uh, was it was it Peter? Um, was it Sean, Sean right. Mm. A and I would personally echo it in my neighborhood. It was uh, next to non-existent this year for whatever reason. I actually took a video. My next door neighbor did it, so. and they were and they were not um, they were not little. They were yeah. rather large. So, <laughs> yeah, that was the surprise to me that that mm. these consumer fireworks as Defined by state law and Scarborough ordinance, are big deals. They they're not insubstantial fireworks. Nope. 
Uh, so that whole question of, oh, it's illegal stuff that's making this impressive display is not, not the case. I think everything we're seeing is legal. Yeah, and I can I say something? Go ahead. Um, and I, I, I'd like to see this discussed potentially rather soon um, before we get into the, you know, warmer summer holiday. Um, I am, this has been on, this is, I've been on ordinance now for four years. This has been on our agenda every year. Um, we still have not made any moves on it, and I think it's time to make a move. Um, all I've heard are complaints against them. Um, I'm not hearing anything positive. Um, I understand that they're a staple for some families, and um, I think that's great. I'm not saying that I necessarily would, um, at this point, lean to take them away altogether. Um, but I would like to um, make changes to the to the ordinance, um, and I'd like to tighten it up. Will? So I heard a, an interesting idea at the workshop um, from the manager of um, Phantom Fireworks, which was um, by permit only, yep. um, which I thought was an interesting suggestion. I agree and I, with I'd you. like to pursue that a little bit um, and at least have conversations about what we really want. And, know that that was not terribly well attended by the public so perhaps there's not quite as much um, interest in on either side um, so I guess I'd, I'd like to have more discussion I would support will on that um, uh, doing that type of getting a permit <coughs> yeah key uh, I guess because I'm anecdotally I've part of my new job has been doing a lot of door knocking just like I did during the campaign and I've probably spoken to 150 residents in the last uh, month or so and I, like Kate, I, I surprisingly have not had anybody overly supportive. Nobody wants to see them gone completely but people don't seem to be uh, um, coming out, crawling out of the woodwork saying uh, keep them, keep them. Yeah. So I would like, I mean if people feel strongly this is the time to get to us and let us know. Um, I like the idea of potentially think looking, exploring the permit idea, um, and maybe limiting the days. I think enforcement is always going to be our bear, um, unfortunately. Yeah. So. Can I just make one comment, Bill? Go right ahead. Follow up Go on right what ahead. both um, Councillor Rowan and Councillor Foley said. I think one thing, too, to keep in mind, um, and I think Will will probably see some of this, but you know, we've been talking about this for a couple of years. So, I've seen public interest in it dwindle because people are like, oh, we're talking about it again. When I first brought it up three years ago on my Facebook page, I probably had 15 emails about it. When I brought it up two months ago, it, I barely had anything. And I think it was because people were like, we already told you how we feel about it yeah. and nothing changed. So yeah. why are we even giving you our opinion? Good point. So I think that maybe that's not the whole reason behind it, but I do think that that's part of it. It's been on my agenda for years, so I think people are frustrated by me continuing to talk about it, and I think it's either do something or drop it. I, uh, uh, I, uh, at, we've, done a, we've done a workshop on this, and we've done a, uh, a poll, which had an extraordinary response. It may not have been the most disciplined poll, but it did show a lot of people saying, we're bothered by this. I agree. Uh, we had at the workshop, the seven of us, uh, indicated kind of, it wasn't a strong consensus uh, in any one particular direction to leave it alone or restrict it or ban it. No, nothing coalesced around that, that, that one of those three options. Uh, and I remember I got the art I cut the article out, put it in my file because it did a good summary of what each of us sort of and and I I do find it while if I had my druthers which I don't I might ban it uh, that'd be my take on it but I think once you have something out there uh, it's more much more difficult because people have an expectation now all of a sudden you go from allowing it to banning it and that kind of right. up and down up and down I think bothers people and they lose confidence in you so restricting it I think could make some sense well so I, I think you had done some research and that you circulated around um, the the complaints that were called into the police department it was really interesting that it was um, 
uh, throughout the whole year, and I'm wondering if maybe we're um, sending mixed messages where we're saying, okay, well, it's completely allowed in just these time windows, uh, but banned at other times. So I don't. I I thought at some point, and, and I uh, I agree uh, with Kate's comment that let's deal with it now. Let's whatever we're going to do, let's make it a priority. We've had our workshop, we've had our survey, so let's make a decision on this. It sounds like there is at least a strong majority on the council that would agree conceptually with some restrictions beyond. And obviously, the town councilors I talked to who had adopted it in 2012 thought there would be a chance that that would happen. So we're not coming up with any novel idea. Uh, and so I guess I would say let's make it a priority uh, and uh, and see if we can come up and it sounds like drafting something that would potentially look at the license permit mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. see if that has merit I'm not sure we just need to educate ourselves so we'll do some uh, educating on that we'll circulate that information and in the meantime we'll also try to put something out there that would allow everyone to give feedback on a what would a series of restrictions look like. Uh, I, I got feedback from fourth, uh, New Year's Eve that it was no big deal. So New Year's Eve and New Year's Day may not be an issue. And <clears throat> the, com the enforcement issue I think is a different issue because I, I think Robbie's got to be able to solve that but there's no easy solution for Robbie to do that. But Tom and I talking about it said maybe New Year's Eve wasn't so bad because people were more conscious of our raising the issue and maybe they were more compliant. Uh, but since it's illegal on those days, no one should be calling it anyway. Mm -hmm. Those are the days we shouldn't really have any complaints. Right. So let's make that, a, everyone agree, we'll make that a priority. Okay. Sign regulations, Tom. <clears throat> yeah, there's a couple of different angles here. Uh, none of it is all that pressing, but um, I must admit it's a bit of a personal pet peeve, but uh, we have heard some other complaints and I was comforted to see them regarding placement of uh, the proliferation of political signs and whether or not we can or should uh, restrict them in certain areas of town, uh, particularly the marsh is the one that uh, what came around this, this election cycle. Uh, beyond that, there's been some Supreme Court rulings on sign content that um, that the town attorney is is uh, diving into and is part of a legal working group with Maine Municipal Association. Uh, so that that's part of the same ordinance um, that probably ought to be taken up as well. So I guess on the political sides, I'm interested to know if there's any appetite uh, to so talk about that. Aspect. I'll, I'll supplement Tom's remarks on the on the content side. That there, there was a U.S. Supreme Court case that really changed the landscape, uh, and it's just a year old. Mm -hmm. uh, and it said, when you have content-based restrictions, they got to treat everybody the same. Uh, and so uh, that that's new law. It's uh, going to affect almost every municipality's uh, sign ordinances and the right place to start is to get our attorney to give us advice on that piece. Mm -hmm. uh, on the political sign side, uh, <clears throat> we all just came off millions of signs and uh, uh, and so people were sensitized to that. And they two of you were personally responsible for some of the For most of them. Yeah. Yeah. Point out. Single sign in the marsh. <laughs> Generally yeah. speaking. Mm -hmm. so, so, and I know that Brunswick passed a private property only ordinance uh, that word that I heard and uh, being told about it was has been very favorably received by the community, the uh, Brunswick community. So I thought one of the things we could ask is to ask Tom to be in touch with the uh, town manager, <coughs> city manager of Brunswick, mm -hmm. and get a real some feedback on whether or not that. And so there's no limitation on where you want to put them. You just can't put them in the public right of way or on a public park or things like that. But you want to have them in every single friend's uh, 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 lot, you can do it. Every mm -hmm. business you know who gives you permission, you can do it. Uh, but apparently it worked successfully there. So if we do a little research on that, 
and get the lawyer to tell us a little bit more about our deficiencies on the content, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we'd be we'd have some homework done. But I wanted to hear whether you think the community would favor or whether you favor uh, restricting political signs. Oh, I think the, absolutely the community would favor it, and I most certainly would. Okay. I think it's worth having a discussion about, um, yeah, yeah. Min minimally, I think getting some uh, some of the environmentally sensitive areas yep. um, addressed would be would be beneficial, um, and then we should certainly have the conversation about um, all the pub right away in public areas. Okay, Katie. Okay. I think it's worth a discussion. Believe it or not, I do hate them as many as I had out there. Yeah, <laughs> well, we all had. You know, in but that's the thing. It's in the mojos, yeah. so I, it I was found a necessary that. evil, and I recognize that. But I would be delighted to not have to. Actually, it's expensive for candidates. Yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'm uh, the only one that doesn't use them. Then I, I found that I hated mine most of all. So. Oh. <laughs> no, just because like then it was like I'm responsible for that. Much as uh, I hate all everybody else's. Like, oh. <laughs> I, I would give that then uh, uh, at our next meeting if. Uh, we're ready to get a report from Tom on feedback from uh, Brunswick uh, and Illegal. feedback from Council on content. Well, we would then take that to another level. We'll make it a an agenda item. Where do we want to go with it? Uh, without necessarily trying to put a draft ordinance in front of us. Let's just see if we can coalesce around something that we all think would be appropriate. Drones. Bill, you've really become yeah. more of an expert on this than I. But it's uh, uh, you know th this use is proliferating on the personal level. Uh, there's now commercial drone operations. Uh, the uh, FAA has put in place some regulations on the commercial uses, but um, there's certainly a lot of private use that, um, and these are ticklish issues that involve uh, privacy issues. Um, and at this point, we have no regulations regarding the use of them in town. Uh, it's about it, it strikes me that we're going to have people complaining uh, when the weather gets a little better and people are outside and treating it like a recreational activity. And I think it's probably a lot of fun. So uh, I think it will become popular. They're being sold now in the millions uh, and they're not expensive uh, and they're not easy to operate. Uh, I had uh, uh, a real estate broker who obviously wanted to use it for that purpose, and he wanted to use my backyard for training purposes, just because it's a big open space where no one can get hurt. But the, they, they can cause harm. So uh, uh, I think if I had to make a recommendation, I would say let's ask the Maine Municipal Association to give us guidance on where this is going, uh, creating our own ordinance to deal with the safety issues, the privacy issues. That's not that easy to do because we're not in the middle of it. But I think uh, one of our uh, legal counsels, counsel has been involved yeah. in a group that's been studying it. Mm -hmm. Phil? It may, it may make sense to have Phil to spend an hour or two of his time to attend and address a number of these things uh, at some level. So of I could see scheduling in a session where we actually have, and would be, I wouldn't even think in terms of executive session, I would say, no. give, no. Us, no. give us your best advice on where the Southern Maine uh, municipal community is going with this. As an aside, I'm not aware of any complaints that have come from the public regarding drone use, but uh, this is one of those that it, I think it's up and coming and and I think it's going to, to appear ahead of it, in perhaps. public parks and it's going to appear on public beaches because uh, those are open spaces that are you can use them easily. I'm, I saw a drone. I could not believe the size of it. It looked like almost like an airplane uh, uh, going uh, over the uh, Nonsuch River, coming up through the harbor, and then went down Pine Point. And it was staggeringly big. It wasn't like this. It was like 30 feet, 40 feet across. Wow. My problem is wow. is really yeah. the ones that the ones that can take pictures and transmit back for people um, on the beach and for children on the beach and 
um, I have a real problem that that's a possibility that, you know, I mean, when we were, when I was a police officer down in Old Orchard, we were confiscating cameras from people that were taking pictures of small children on the beach yep. when they were changing. So that really bothers me that these drones could be on the beach and we don't n potentially know who's launching that and it's just there. Mm. So that really is something that bothers me. Yeah, I don't know enough about it. Do you have to be line of sight? Do you have to no. see the thing or it can be operating remotely? Yes, the, the more, um, the ones that can take pictures, um, you don't even have to be in, you could be a mile away from it. Mm -hmm. um, they actually have a, they have a, uh, camera yeah, the on it, GoPro camera. yeah, and mm -hmm. it can transmit and take pictures back to you. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned that my sister-in-law is the superintendent up north, and they have a, they were the first high school in the state to have a class on how to teach kids yeah. how to pilot drones. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's definitely something we need more information on. And personally, I, I would never want to see one on any of our beaches. Yeah, I, I would go that far. Um, well, so my concern with them at the beaches are, one, a little bit like Kate said about the kids, but also the plovers. Yes. It's like kites. Yeah. Uh, you know, they oh, can, it be, would definitely it can be. be seen as a predator. But, um, hmm. but I, my question is really, do we know what other municipalities are doing with this? And in some ways, I mean, this seems really complex to me. Um, I think it's good to research it, but this would be one of those things where I would probably do what you said earlier. Is I might wait and see what some other people do first. I'm not, it, when I think about enforcing something like that, it, talk about complicated. If we can't get, you know, if we can't enforce someone not picking up the horse poop, uh, how we're going to yeah. enforce somebody flying a drone from a mile away um, until we start seeing major complaints and problems emerging, um, it just might not be the, mm -hmm. it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be my, in my top three probably, I guess is what I'm saying. And I, and I see, uh, uh, Phil Saucier, who's been involved with this analysis given, I went to a, uh, uh, a seminar that he gave, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it was very good. Uh, I think the MMA is studying the issue on behalf of all, and therefore we have a couple of sources ready-made to sort of give us an update. And we're not going to create the mold I think we're going to let somebody else do it. Hopefully, MMA will do it. I think there's a model ordinance that that they've already drafted that uh, is a starting point for the conversation. And if we are educated when the concerns and complaints start to arise in what would be more the summer season, at least we'll be ready to act, which is probably be a good place to leave it. Okay. Uh, firearms. Not, that's not first priority. That's not something later on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll wait to hear back from you in m the months to come, and it's, it doesn't have to be in the next month or two. Okay. Uh, firearms. This We just stumbled on this this past hunting season. Uh, there's a firearms ordinance in place for, in town, and in short, it says it shall be unlawful for any person to shoot or discharge any firearm on land owned by the town of Scarborough. Um, we don't post any of that property, and it may be that I can, it's just implicit here that I have the authority based on that language to go post property. I just want to be clear in that regard. There's a couple of town-owned parcels that uh, hunting is, is, a, is a big deal. Mm -hmm. There's about 40 acres of town-owned property uh, at the end of uh, the Tibbetts Road off Broadturn Road. It's an old landfill site, but it's at this point, um, it, it's beautiful, pristine uh, habitat for all sorts of wildlife. Um, we hear firearm. We hear at my house. Yeah, that's probably occurring on private property. Yeah. I suspect, but this is for town-owned property. Yeah. I'm not sure if we even need to amend this ordinance to uh, direct posting of the property, or whether I guess the question is, do you want us to? go to some greater lengths to enforce this requirement, because right now we don't. So, so the, the people are unsuspecting, frankly. The, the question is, we, we have a firearms ordinance that does not permit uh, discharging a firearm on public land. Right. Correct. But we don't post the land, so people aren't really aware that they are necessarily on public land. 
And so what Tom's saying is, uh, is it implicit in the stat uh, ordinance as it now exists that he has the authority to go ahead and post? Yeah. Or should we just add a reference to the ordinance that, that well, clarifies? I, I heard it's one not posted in public land or it's not posted that you Either. can fire a firearm? Either oh. way. Either way. And so, because posting generally means I posted my land, it means do not trespass, do not discharge a firearm. I, I guess I heard one other thing in, in there, though, was that there, that there actually is town land in which hunting may be a, a good use, which is explicitly prohibited by the ordinance, and we're just choosing not to enforce it. And I think that might be a bad precedent to just say, well, we're going to have an ordinance on the books and that we're going to ignore. I think it is implicit that I could post it under this. I mean, it's clear. Um, I guess there might be a bit of a firestorm that results, and that's why I wanted to get some. Because people are, are hunting on it, yeah. and, and frankly, and I'm we're not okay aware with that, that there's any necessarily any problems. In fact, uh, a very responsible hunter was the one that brought it to our attention. He came in to ask, and yeah. and uh, that's what caused me to stumble on it. It, it wasn't uh, as a result of a complaint. Uh, it was someone just inquiring. Yeah. Personally, I feel like we should probably take a look at that to get that straightened out. Yep, I do too. Okay, Tom, let's make it a. It's uh, not a front burner. I mean, it's probably an issue for like the fall, frankly. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. You're right. It's it's not going to be an issue until yep. the fall. But I do think that it would be uh, whether it raises a bit of a firestorm or not. We'll find out. Okay. Uh, uh, traffic. Amend update speed limits and Pine Point parking. Yeah, there's a number of little, I mean, the traffic ordinance is this large ordinance that deals with all kind of things traffic related. So there's a lot of moving parts to that. Uh, so there's a couple of uh, speed limit updates that I'm aware of. DOT has changed some limits and we ought to update our ordinance. And this is the ordinance where if we wish to do some parking restrictions or allowances, no, I guess restrictions because there's none that exist, on the lower end of Pine Point Road, this would be the ordinance to do it in. Um, this has been kicking around for two, if not three years. W although we've made some progress in the last eight months or so in that we're studying more carefully Pine Point area in particular and doing some master planning. And Angela Blanchett, the town engineer, has actually come up with a parking design that we've uh, been chatting with the business owners um, regarding. And I, th I think we may have presented it to the ordinance committee as well. Uh, we've not gone to the next step of actually, by ordinance, um, putting in new regulations that would restrict parking. Um, is that East Grand Avenue plan or is that Pine Point Road plan? This is Pine Point Road. Okay. In front of the landing and the clam bake, that kind of from the bridge down yeah. to, the, to the intersection. So I, I guess I would say that, so we've been, my understanding is that we've been looking at making some improvements to the road but maybe we shouldn't wait for our parking ordinance to do that. I think it's been, a, a, there have been enough complaints about it that we should probably look at it right. in advance of any changes that we make. Okay. We've, we've been looking at it for a couple of years and we met two years ago with all of the owners down there, like the landing, clam bake, um, the lobster people that just went in there. Um, mm -hmm. to get their sort of their opinion on like how do you think this is working what happens when you overfill um, and they actually asked us not to touch it they were like it's fine the way it is we actually would prefer you to do nothing at that time yeah I think we've I think they've some of them have come around to because we actually proposed a plan to them uh, clam bake is the only holdout um, and as I recall their concern is that they they say that they get all the overflow. When yeah. parking is restricted somehow, there's all sorts of folks that try to sneak into the lot. And well, like the landing, when it overfills, they go to the clam bake. And like one of the brothers sometimes has to stand in the parking lot to make sure that it's his restaurant people that are parking there. So it's got to be frustrating. Um, you, did you say Angela uh, has a proposed yes. design for that? Yes. So given that we passed a complete streets policy. Angela is now working and would incorporate that policy into this new design. Mm -hmm. We've got a big East Grand Avenue, you know, redesign proposed. We've got Conroy's garage is going to be a restaurant that Barbecue. seems to be unusually cool. arranged mm -hmm. for parking. They've got a quarter mile away, they've got parking. 
Yeah, so no we've got a lot of things going on that would seem to need to move forward before we as an ordinance committee would really jump in and, and drive that. The only thing that will be driving it is that uh, the state of Maine is going to pave from the bridge down to the intersection, and they wanted to do it last season. We asked them to hold off so we could sort through some of this. So we did um, a traffic study down there. Yeah, remember? we've done speed studies. We've speed done. Study. It's been fairly well fine. studied, and DOT is going to be repaving it. So to the extent that uh, we may want to do some improvements to divine parking areas with landscape islands and the such. Um, I don't think we're can convince DOT to put off that that work any longer. Um, is does that really does it fall to the ordinance committee to take the lead on behalf of the town council? Usually, uh, in only in terms of uh, uh, regulating parking through the traffic ordinance. Usually, we deal with that. Why don't we? Sir, uh, I think there's enough concern expressed over the years that. Uh, as this moves forward, either the town manager or the town engineer would apprise us of developments that would spur us to act. Right. I think that's probably where there. Well, what I can do then is uh, present that same plan that we've worked on and have virtual buy-in on uh, to you, just to update you what it, what it is. And essentially the issue is right now there's no regulation, so parking is everywhere, and you've heard from Susan Hamill and, and others um, regarding a, a concern with that because it's, it, there's no regulation. What we're proposing is the allowance of some on-street parking um, but within some confines, not, and, and we not don't, to the extent it is today. We don't want to be behind the curve in terms of being informed so that if there are developments we need to know uh, and we'll leave it to you to inform us in a timely manner at whatever meeting uh, what's, what's happening that might cause us to want to right. I mean, that's something adopt an ordinance. I mean, is the, is the timing such that we need to take action before the paving season? I would say so. Um, so it's not your next meeting urgent, but uh, the plan is done, so it's not a big deal for us to you know, prepare so, for that. So we okay. could, if, you're, if your agenda will allow it, we can bring it to you. Okay, that's really the later. question. Fit it in before the paving season. Okay, good. Mm, a good neighbor. Uh, yeah, uh, street, op street opening. Street opening. Mike Shaw has uh, a number of uh, small changes that he'd like to make to the street opening ordinance. That's one that we could throw into agenda. I don't think it will cause any heavy lifting or any heartache. It's just kind of a uh, administrative thing that Mike has. Okay. So he has a series of, of proposed amendments that he'd like to bring forward. Again, no great urgency, but it's something that you can plug uh, on a future agenda uh, if time permits. Okay, we'll work on. I don't think it's be very complicated for you. Good neighbor. Good neighbor really is a result of a couple of things. Um, we have a noise ordinance in place, and that works fairly well. Um, we had a complaint a couple months back around a, a neighbor having a light that was bothersome to a, an abutter, and we don't have any regulation um, um, specifically around that issue. Yeah, bright light shining on, off yeah, your own uh, property onto another person. Correct, it was shedding light yeah. onto a, a budding property and it was bothersome, and I don't know, was it done out of spite? I don't remember the particulars, I just remember that we didn't have any particular re regulation that we could point to. There was some petty light going back and Undoubtedly, forth. these often uh, have to do with personalities, yes. Well, I think everybody, you know, when you're in the town council position, you go, protect neighbors from harm when they're just doing nothing wrong right. and somebody else yeah. is the neighbor and causing them annoyance, you really do try and mm -hmm. protect them against that. So mm -hmm. The other issue that comes up for somewhat but fairly consistently is we don't have a what, what I would term a property maintenance uh, code in terms of how someone cares for their property, if they let their grass grow tall or and on a occasion, uh, neighbors can be bothered by how their neighbors care for their property. So it's possible why we've, why I've kind of thrown it in this good neighbor. We could have an ordinance that touches on kind of all these sorts of things, what mm -hmm. people do on their private property that has an effect on others. Could, could I add a pet peeve? Uh, so do we have anything that, um, I know in Portland, if you have a sidewalk, you have to clear it of snow, uh, but I don't believe that we have anything here in Scarborough, but that might fall in into no, that as well. 
You mean like if it's the if the sidewalk's in front of your house? In front of your house. That's like your responsibility, right? Right. Your house or your oh. business. To go. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. It would actually be in the traffic ordinance, but you're right. We do not have that requirement. Um, Are you thinking that you would draft something uh, uh, more for a general discussion? Yeah, Larissa uh, yeah, Crockett, the assistant manager, has put together a memo that kind of lays out some bullet points that could be included in a good neighbor ordinance, and she has some personal experience in the town of Acton where she served, uh, they put in such an ordinance. So we've that's got good. some things to look to if, if that's of any in interest to you. Why don't you circulate those? It's interesting because, or excuse me, can I say Go right ahead. Um, it's interesting because in our neighborhood, our um, association, even though we're all houses, we have an association and a lot of Scarborough, t Scarborough neighborhoods do have associations. Mm -hmm. That's actually in our association so yep. we can actually be fined if we don't maintain you have our covenants bonds. that yeah. can be enforced. And, yep. but in fact, one of my neighbors got fined because they had a couch in their backyard or something, and yeah. one mm -hmm. of our neighbors was saying they couldn't sell their house because, yeah, it was this whole big thing. I, t I know you know who I'm talking about. I do. So. Um, but anyway, it so would fall. Yeah, yeah, so let's start with seeing what uh, yep. Larissa's come up with, yep. and, uh, and we'll go from there. How about... Uh, can we get that, Tom, before the meeting? Like Absolutely. Start? Yeah, it's already drafted. Great. Yep. Yeah, electronically is good. Public safety impact fee. Tom? This is something that Councillor Chiazzo brought up. Um, some of you who've participated in the budget process may recall Chief Moulton reporting a rather startling uh, revelation that we have we've now appreciate that the particularly large, bar, large retail operations are very time consuming. In fact, uh, one of the larger ones in town, he calculated that it essentially it takes the services of one officer mm -hmm. to handle um, that business. Um, part of that has to do with how aggressive they are with their own in-store uh, surveillance yeah. for shoplifting and other crime, but they don't have arrest authority. So they find the pe they get the people, get the video evidence, but we have to go process it. Um, a lot of paperwork too, and and so this notion really spun from that. Uh, is there a way that we can assess back to these fo these business entities um, is a that fee that would represent kind of the impact that they're having, uh, not unlike how we do with schools and traffic and those sorts of things. Is that something you can do after the fact, though? Is well, that a grandfather type thing? Yeah. Like, I mean, well, I understand if I you were building a new building that size, I could understand us mm -hmm. putting that in as the new building's going up, but it would be hard and it would be hard yeah, I, for me to go back to this company and say, after the fact, you're taking up so much of our time, now we're going to, so what if they say no? No, we're not going to do that. Well, the, point. the, yeah. the law does not uh, excuse somebody, grandfathered rights <laughs> are often limited, yes. so that you can pass an ordinance that says, now you have to do this and comply with this, and everyone has to. Mm. But usually the people who make the policy, the ordinance, uh, are try to be as respectful as possible about what kind of adverse impact they're causing. I think this is an idea that's worth at least exploring, yeah. and because I would like to know whether other communities have actually done it. If no one has ever done uh, a public safety impact fee, then I'm not. That might cause me to look at it one way. I'm pretty sure they have. Not in Maine, but no? I think there are nationwide. Yeah. Scarp is one of the only ones that has impact fees. Period. Okay. Um, it's interesting. City of Portland. Jeff Levine, as the planning director, has inquired to Dan Bacon just today um, about our impact fees because they're considering putting them in. Westbrook yeah. has done the same. We're truly one of the only ones that has them in the state. Would everybody be okay with having Tom direct some study to be yeah. done and then report back to us just as a report on an agenda item at a later time that it's enough of an interest to go For that sure. far? For sure. I, had, I, was, I was wondering if we could expand this a little bit. This, so this would be um, the public safety impact fee, but I'd really like some committee to be looking at uh, the existing impact fees that we have and maybe looking at uh, are they, you know, are they right? Are they appropriate? I don't know if necessarily ordinance is the right committee, but it feels like some of the traffic and school um, impact fees we could at least have a conversation about. As well. I think I they. Really? I think they did that uh, a few years ago. 
I think I thought Ed Blaze did that a few years ago. No. no. No, not sorry, very, very sorry. I thought when he was talking about the budget, I thought he had gone back through and gone through all of the. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I don't think it would be a rule. In I, don't know. I feel like it lives, would be an ordinance, but maybe because they're in the ordinance. Because they're, they're in, in the ordinance. 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 Yeah. But well, it doesn't mean Tom, that what we do you can't think join. Of, of that, that, that's a, a fairly extensive undertaking to mm -hmm. do it right. Uh, impact fees need to bear a direct resemblance to the impact created. So. They can't be numbers arbitrarily derived right. for traffic impact fee. We actually have designs for particular intersections and have assessed a per trip fee based on the cost of that oh, implementation. You know, I, and with schools, there's a similar uh, methodology that we I, had consultants help and, us. And develop. listening to Dan wow. expound on on it, he probably has a he would be able to at least educate us on a little bit of the background on that. Sure. Yeah. It, I, I think what had struck me and what kind of prompted me was that when we were looking at some of the uh, affordable units, the school impact fee was the same for a one bedroom or a three bedroom was my recollection. I could be mistaken there, but um, I, I just remember feeling like there was some kind of impact fee. It might have been the sewer. There's different connection fee that was it's the different same by housing type, no, but right. I think you're right. Bedrooms you yeah, right. don't matter. Yeah, and so that's where I was kind of thinking like maybe we could just look at that component of it. So. Yeah, because that wouldn't make sense. Why would it? Why would a one versus a three be the same impact fee? Especially if what we're saying is that a one bedroom is very right. unlikely to have school. Right. Right. So. Okay. Yeah, I would definitely push to have Tom. Well, we'll do some, we'll do some research then. I yeah. guess that that sounds like uh, at least uh, Lim limited to public safety. Or are you interested in the, the larger conversation? I think the larger conversation. But I think it I would think be for a lot of work, though. Maybe but it would be no more than at starting with Dan, probably trying to do a memo that he could dictate off the top of his head because of his knowledge of how that all works in the because it all comes out of the planning board right. process, right. site plan, uh, and, and that's where and, the fees are assessed and, and building yeah. permits. Yes. Uh, so the other part I'll just foreshadow is that we're entering the comprehensive plan process yeah. and. <laughs> I suspect as part of that, we may want to update um, yeah. Yeah. the 10-year-old growth and services report so we have a sense of impact based on types of development. And this whole growth management ordinance that we're talking about now, the impact fees are companion to that. Yeah. They, they all came, rose out of the same conversation. Yep. Makes sense. So we're going to be digging into it uh, a bit deeper as part of the comprehensive plan. I'm quite sure. So maybe just to make a note okay. that yeah. as we do right. that, we could review this as well. But I can certainly have Dan spend some time just to kind of give you the history and give you a sense of where uh, we might go. So I don't know, Phil, if you were paying attention to that, but but personally, if it's something that we're going to do in another avenue, like maybe if we just make sure that it gets done as part of that process, yes, um, we'd be okay rather than asking Dan to come mm -hmm. in and, and do that when we already Dan? have a pretty full. Yeah, exactly. I mean, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, or speech permit. So she, Sue kind of covered that. And yeah, her points were uh, add the word immediately mm -hmm. to, to the cleanup. The bun bags. And the bun bags, uh, ban rider for a second of, uh, offense. Uh, and that the permit cost is 20 bucks, which right. is pretty low. Yeah. Uh, and we'd have to coordinate our efforts with Old Orchard Beach. Correct. I didn't think those were unreasonable. Me neither. As, no. a, as a scope of. I'd love to see the bone bag. Tom, what'd you think? My dog likes you think that I, I think <laughs> Ms. Hamill is quite right that um, the horse riders will be interested in this matter. So uh, it doesn't seem like an unreasonable thing to me. It, it sounds like it's fairly commonplace. I don't. I just don't see why so you can't. Why they can't just be required to use bun bags? It seems so yeah. simple to yeah, me. Yeah, it to does fix seem it. simple. Why but make it more complicated yeah. than it has to be? I was also wondering with the closing of Scarrow Downs if there's going to be a drop in the use. I, I don't know. Just Mm -hmm. I have friends that come from all over the state yeah. to just ride on Scarborough beaches. Yeah, not just the trotters. I think there's just people use it for exercise. That's why I saw most mm -hmm. stuff, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the timing of that one is uh, seasonal, mm -hmm. so we wouldn't have to have anything on the books till next uh, October, right? Well, I mean, it's happening as we speak. Happening now. Yeah. March, April, right? Well, well I think it's the happening. season ends the 31st of March, was my understanding. Right. We're in season, so to speak. So but most people have gotten their permits, right? But I guess I'm, what I'm saying is we'd have to uh, approve something, recommend something 
for first and second reading, and by the time you get done, it's April. Exactly. It's probably best to put in new regulations, That's issuing new right. licenses, so new permits. Yeah. Good. So I just so we can prioritize it. Yep. yep. I think it's of the the scope didn't sound unreasonable. Uh, the timing seems like we could do it this summer. Okay. Uh, or fall. Um, shellfish. Uh, I have to you, apologize. No, I I'm know very you're, sorry that you're, I, I got to pick up my daughter. Go ahead. Very <laughs> sorry. Very embarrassing. Uh, shellfish. So shellfish, I just threw that on there. I had some forewarning that there might be some energy in looking back at that and proposing some changes. Um, you heard a, a fair amount of that last night, so I, I don't have an opinion either way. I, well, I guess I do. In a perfect world, I would love changes to come from the Commission itself, um, and I think we ought to give it some time to see if that can happen um, before this, this group kind of takes it by the horns and tells them what's good for them. Um, and I think the, the mere threat that the Council might do that might be a good motivator for them, frankly. Um, I am meeting next week with one, I hope two of the members that had previously resigned and it looks as though they're um, stand a good chance of getting back on, which is a great development. Step back. Yeah. Um, so I think it makes some sense to take a little step back, give them a little room to work, uh, and it would be best for them to come forward with some proposed changes rather than us forcing them upon them. Would it be appropriate for you to communicate to them that the Ordinance Committee considers them to be the best source of recommendations and that what we would like to get from them is something of a report or recommendation, series of recommendations, as to how things might be improved. I don't think any of us are terribly familiar mm. with the, uh, the ordinance and how people are appointed. Uh, it struck me as um, uh, with only half the people who actually have licenses are actually clamming. That struck, I think, several of us as unusual, uh, but I'm not sure that's the problem. Uh, the Marine uh, Resource Officer, I think, probably might have some ideas. The, the two areas that I've heard of uh, for changes would be around governance, and that might be something the Council has to push down on them, frankly. Uh, there's been a, a bit of a persistent concern that uh, most of the folks on the Shellfish Commission have a financial interest in uh, it's their livelihood. And so there's no secret about that. Uh, so you could, if you wished, insist that the, the governance be more representative of the general public, not just those in the commercial industry, if you will. Um, and we I, do I designate uh, on various committees a representative composition. You could somebody who's an expert in this, or as a member of the public. And so I would, I, I just speculate that they may be unable or unwilling to propose serious change in that regard because of self self interest. I'm just putting it out there. Uh, the other area is uh, insisting that they surround themselves with better data for license allocation decisions. I think we heard that up and down the council. <laughs> Chamber uh, last night that it would be great to have better data rather than personalities and opinions. Let's let's know what we're talking about, and they, hopefully those decisions are easier in the future. So it could be that the ordinance uh, is very clear and, and um, mandates that certain things are done to ensure that the data will be done consistently year in year out and be available for decision making. Uh, yeah, I thought uh, last night was informative. Uh, I thought uh, uh, Will's uh, one to six vote was the best negative vote cast this year. <laughs> I did. I was sitting there just thinking that was a good vote. The year's early, though. Uh, but but <laughs> it, politics had not, not the first time I've lost six one. Had had us go uh, the way we did, but it, it uh, because it. There's obviously a preservation of the stock, and and I don't. None of us do the answer. So what what's cautious? What's careful? What's preserving and protecting? Well, none of us really could get our hands around it. So 
there's a bit of contradictory um, phrase that was mentioned a couple times, optimal utilization. Optimal utilization. I think that's the kind of the broad mandate given to them yeah. as a resource. And there's a lot of opinions what around that what that is. Well, it depends from what perspective you look. <laughs> um, so there could be some tightening up. Um, so let's leave it that they're going to kind of grapple with it. You'll deliver that message? I will. And in fact, I've already had a conversation with a Marine Resources Officer. You heard him last night. Um, from my opinion, he's uh, he knows the issues. I think he, uh, um, I've encouraged him to, to be a, a bit more involved in their affairs. And uh, I think that could be helpful as part of the solution going forward. Good. And I think Peter has been a regular attendee and pretty good reporter. Yes. So we've got the benefit of getting regular updates. So let's leave it at that. Could we, I mean, it's one of the things I heard last night that I really uh, kind of liked and resonated with me was the idea of, you know, reaching out to some local universities who might have some students willing to do some of that analytics. They might take that on as a project for free to come out and help them figure out how to have better metrics yeah. or, you know, those measures. I don't know. Maybe the Marine Maybe office. Maybe encourage, yeah, encouraging them to reach out right. to that. Those are the things uh, Officer Anderson, I think, can be helpful on, making yeah. those contacts and surrounding them with Certainly, more resources. Yeah, okay. informing us and then. I mean, the there's a the biology to it, obviously. Yeah. Right. Uh, so I think giving them some space, time and space, okay. might make some sense, and if they fail to, maybe maybe it is a matter you take up. Growth management. I just put that on because it's an issue that's swirling. I, I might suggest that it's probably already transcended committee. Uh, the full council had a taste of it and is likely to tackle it sooner than later as a full council. Um, but I put it on as kind of a on the laundry list, if you will. Because you're really talking about the reserve pool of permits being adequate to address the needs of the uh, yes. in developments the near, that are approved. In the near term, that is the pressure point. I, I think there's probably some good reason to do a comprehensive top to bottom look. But again, I see that as really something uh, being informed to a great degree through the comp plan. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the pressure is kind of immediate with these two big projects, and whether we like it or not, it's in front of us, and I don't think we can dictate the time frame in that regard. They can't wait a year for us to get through our process. So I, that issue is going to come to you as soon as your next meeting. Good. I haven't sorted all that out, but um, sooner than later. All right, we'll leave it that it's really been a matter that, because of its urgency, has really sort of passed by the Ordinance Committee is going to be addressed by the seven members of the Town Council. Well, I guess I don't expect the Town Council, the full Council, to change the structure of the ordinance. I think what I'm hearing is that we're going to let the comp plan inform maybe the changes that we make to this growth management ordinance at a later date. And so what we may need to do is replenish some of the numbers, but in the short term, there's in no the short changes. Term. changes in, in the right. short but term, in the that long would be term. the only thing. That would be the only thing, exactly. Yeah. And then in the longer term, we're right. going to do some more analysis of maybe housing types, and and oh. it, it could inform our growth yeah, management and, and check in whether the annual allocation is appropriate or right. isn't. I mean, that's not been a problem to date, um, but it could be lower. It could be higher. Yeah. Um, well, you just said we will see this as soon as our next meeting. That's the so, timeline so. we're on. I thought that it was going, the planning board had to meet on it first. Well, remember what you considered uh, as a council was the contract zone for a particular project. Right. The issue that overlays all of the multifamily conversation is the growth management ordinance and the reserve pool. So it's the reserve pool as opposed to renegotiating the contract zone. Yep. Right, but I thought yeah. what we voted on at that meeting was to send this to the planning board, have them vet it through a little bit more, and then it would come back to us. March, February, March was the time frame. Not the, con the contract zone, yes. What the contract the oh, You're talking about the next ordinance meeting. I'm no. thinking. No. No. No, he's council meeting. The, because they're separate issues and the, and the permits applies just as much to the executive park issue. Yes. 
uh, as the contract zone people, which is uh, gateway shops, uh, uh, both of them want assurances that they can build out the 300 odd units uh, within one to two to three years. Yeah, within 36 months, something like that. I thought for the contract zone, I thought that was part of the contract, the, the zone that we had agreed to was that there would be... They put it in there. there. They put it in there. Yes. That was inserted. Right. So, th so then my understanding is the driver then would be the Enterprise Park. Yes. Right. They don't need any zoning relief. They're permitted right. by right. Uh, they meet the ratio of 60-40, which is the issue for gateway, mm -hmm. uh, but they want some assurances sooner than later um, so they can and line up their finance. there's a timing issue. Yes, because entirely. It's just that, yeah, because they can build that out at right. their leisure, no problem, as permits are available. Become available. Right. Uh, right. So we can't, there's nothing we can do in terms of that particular project. It's the contract zone project that we have an opportunity to do any kind of negotiation. Sure. For housing. Right. But I'm still a little types. confused because I, I, for clarity's sake, I thought, and then I thought, we asked, I asked him to go back and look through the notes, I thought that before it came back to the full council in any way, shape, or form, it would go to the planning board. And I was looking back, in fact, I expected it would be on the January 9th meeting, which it wasn't. So I'm wrong about that. That's, I'm Again, just trying to the contract out. zone, I believe that you were correct, that the hmm. contract zone has to go back through, but if the... The, the number of permits which enterprise enterprise the business park the other development right. needs more permits and so therefore it's coming before us to discuss before we get any of the info back from the planning board on the other one on the other one right and and uh, exactly uh, you should not expect okay. the planning board to report I on understand it would fall uh, in that order but sh the planning board wouldn't uh, not customarily that they would report on an ordinance um, we have had the long range planning committee which is a committee of council, mm -hmm. kicking this issue around for three meetings. They've got another one tomorrow morning. Uh, this is the STAR conversation piece. And they're the group that typically informs the council and provides a recommendation on development-related, growth-related um, issues in town. And part of why I might have missed some things in transition. So did they provide something to the council prior to my arrival then? No, they've been working at it at the committee level, and again, they'll take it up tomorrow as part of their monthly meeting. Right. But you said you've, they've had it at two or three. I think their last this meeting. will be the third time they've talked about it. Yes, tomorrow morning. And, it, and I promised everyone I would Sorry, wrap yeah. this up at 5:30. Uh, so, uh, uh, did anyone have any anything else that wasn't on this long laundry list that they thought should be thrown in, and we can? Discuss uh, at a future meeting. I think there's plenty work. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, my, mine was the impact piece, but I'm I'm uh, placated that it should wait till we get some more information from the council. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's where we would push to be able to address uh, how we deal oh, with affordable well, housing and uh, that percentages and and we'll get a better, <laughs> more informed uh, yeah. use of services. Is that the name of the uh, growth in services growth was uh, okay. the report that kind of kicked everything off. It finally documented the cost of development, if you will. Gotcha. Good. We covered a lot of ground. Uh, you need a motion? Yeah, motion return uh, would be accepted. So moved. I can vote now. All, it, all, it, right, all in <laughs> favor? Good. Good. Yeah, we would. That's right. I know. We've got here forever. <laughs> I can't wait till the next meeting.